Hello, welcome to this mini masterclass on how to make paperwork and life admin fun. My name is Lucy Gonzalez and I use this approach in my everyday life. I have been doing it for many years and I find it really useful. So I thought I would share it with you and maybe you'll find it helpful too. Okay, so what do I mean by life admin? You already know, it is all of the things that are boring, scary, tedious, you just don't wanna do them, filing your taxes, or buying groceries, or cleaning your house, or writing feedback at work, or completing your timesheets, a number of things that I just don't wanna do, but I have to. That's the key. If it's life admin, it means that you cannot run away from it, not for long anyway. Um, and so the approach that I want to share with you couldn't really be any simpler. Life admin is really boring, Sometimes it's scary, sometimes it's both. And games are the opposite. They are fun and they are exciting. You want to do them. So what if life admin was a game? The idea at its most basic level is that inside of all of the different life admin tasks that you have to complete, there are games that you just have to discover. You just have to unlock them uh, to turn them into fun things that you actually want to do. So how are we going to do that? It is going to be so easy, you won't believe it. So when you're learning a new game, when you are playing a new game, you have to figure out how it works. How do you win it? What are the, the rules? Um, what are the tricks? You have to understand how the game works. But in this case, the game is locked underneath all the boring and scary bits. So what you're going to do is invent it. You're going to make it up. You need three basic things for each one of these games. You need an objective. So what is the point of this game? How are we going to win this game? And also a little bit of like, why are we playing the game? Then you need to find out or invent the constraints for the game. These are the rules, the tactics, the little mechanisms that allow you to complete a game and win it. And then you also want um, rewards. That's the, that's the thing that makes the game fun. The reward can be physical, but it can also just be a feeling of accomplishment or fun or um, relief when you complete it. And there can also be physical rewards. We'll talk more about all of these three things in the next few slides. And just in case there are any video game designers or board game designers uh, or sports people watching these, um, yes, I am aware that there are many other aspects that make games fun and entertaining and successful. I'm not going to go into those because we are not going to come up with really complicated games. This is going to be easy. So we're going to keep the first three, objective, constraints, reward. All right, so let's get on with it. Let's design your game in your mind uh, or on a notebook or whatever you have that you are taking notes on. Think of a task that you want to complete and that is a life admin task that you have been avoiding and that you want to turn into a game. For my example, I am going to use the idea of filing my taxes because that is one of those things that no matter how many times I have to do it, um, it just never feels like it is something that I'm really looking forward to do. So I'm going to turn filing my taxes into a game. Ready? Have you picked yours? Great. So the first thing that we need to come up with is the objective. Why are you playing this game? For my game, File My Taxes, the objective is not to file my taxes. I think that we can do better than that. How about if in the game File My Taxes, the objective is to minimize the stress and the last minute rushing that has to do with filing my taxes. The last minute rushing is really what creates the stress. So the, the point of the game is to file your taxes before the deadline. That is the win condition. If I file them after the deadline, obviously I have lost. So I want to file my taxes before the deadline, but also I want to do it in a way that is not stressful and where I'm not rushing to file them. Did you come up with an objective? Write it down and make sure that it's very clear and that it shows not just the final stage of the task. So how do you actually complete it? That is the win condition, but also the objective, the reasons for why you're playing this game. Um, okay, let's move on. The next two things that I said we needed were rules and rewards. So for this game of filing my taxes, I cannot come up with the rules because I am not the one that is going to receive the submitted taxes, right? In this case, the rules for the game are set by the competing team, which is the tax authority. And they have come up with all kinds of hoops to jump through and all kinds of obstacle courses that I have to complete in order to submit my taxes. So the first thing that I want to do is find out all of the rules, read them, understanding, understanding them, and make sure that I know how the game is going to be played. And I can hear you groaning already 
that already sounds really boring. That is already very annoying to have to go and spend time looking through a website, finding the, the templates, finding the forms, finding the rules, reading the, ugh, all of that is already boring. So I'm gonna turn it into a side quest. This is an extra mission that will help me achieve my final objective. It's like a mini game inside of the larger game. And file my taxes, the side quest that I'm going to be discovering all along the journey are going to be called Paperwork, Paperwork Mountain. So a visit to Paperwork Mountain, and this is where the rewards come in, a visit to this Paperwork Mountain is going to be worth one point in my game. I am also going to award myself one point for each day that I submit the tax filing before the deadline. But careful, because if you didn't understand the rules properly, it might be that you cannot submit them too early because then that comes with a penalty or it means that you have to review them again and that is defeating the point of the game. So go back to your rules, read them properly, understanding them and assign yourself a point for visiting Paperwork Mountain and then for each day that I submit before the deadline, I assign myself another point. And what are these points worth? Whatever I want. Because why? Because I invented this game. So in my case, I really love books. I really love reading and sometimes I don't make time for myself to go read and to spend time with my books. So I am going to turn all of my points into both physical books and time to read. The important thing about this is that I decide what I want. I decide what the points mean and I decide what the rewards are. So it is going to be exciting for me. It is going to be very personalized and it is going to feel fun for me. And you might come up with a different thing. I'd be interested in finding out what you decide the rewards are for and what the system of points uh, is that you're going to design. Then there's also another thing. Some of these games uh, have to be repeated constantly. The filing my tax game is actually an annual game. You have to do it once a year and you have to do it for many, many years. So try to find out, um, try to find out, find out ways of leveling up. For example, every year, try to beat your score in some way. Maybe there's a point where you are having um, consistently completing the game and consistently submitting the taxes before the deadline and you are no longer stressed. So see if you can simplify things. See if you can invent new ways of making uh, the game fun. And the same applies for any of the games that you might be designing right now. Depends on the task. Okay, what else do we need? We're ready. We can now play the game. How are we going to play the game? There's two things that you need to keep in mind for playing your game. First of all is make sure that you win. This is a game that you are invented, so it would be a little bit crazy if you ended up losing. So make it easier for you to win. Hack yourself. Here are two things that I do that help me. I schedule time to play my game. For filing my taxes, I know that every month I am going to have to collect evidence to um, use to calculate all of the all of the tax categories and so on. So um, most of these are not physical these days. Some of these are emails. Some of these are um, electronic invoices. But I also still every now and then have like papers and bits and pieces that need to be collected. So I schedule time to play. This is the hack. I put an hour a month to sit in a coffee shop with a nice cup of coffee and maybe a piece of cake and do all of the gameplay. So that's when I collect all of the, all of the evidence for tax filing. That's when I classify it. That's when I check if anything can come with deductions for me. And I put it in a binder and I put it in an electronic folder in my, on my laptop. And then I celebrate each time that I actually make the time to play and complete the task and complete the paperwork mountain visit. Then I celebrate with a little bit of a high five for myself, but it can also sometimes be the schedule itself. For example, in this, the example that I just gave you, um, the celebration of each side quest is that I do it in a coffee shop that I really love and I get a really nice coffee and a really nice piece of cake. And so that is part of the reward for doing it. So find ways that will make it work for you. Find what are the conditions that will allow you to win at your own game. And then the other tip that I want to give you is to make it real. 
games are much better when they are played with friends, for example. So you can invite other people to play the game with you. Maybe you know other people that are going to have to file their taxes too. And so you can all play together and it could either be a little bit competitive and you know see who completes more side quests or who wins more uh, games by being the uh, more points by being the first one to submit, for example. But you could also just have a spectators. There's lots of people in your life your family, your friends, uh, some of your colleagues, your um, your fellow together culture members that might want to just spectate and watch you play your game. So you can tell them how many points you have collected, uh, how many side quests you have completed, and you can celebrate with them when you complete and win the final game, which is submitting your file, uh, your taxes ahead of the deadline. And then the final thing that I um, I want to highlight is that it definitely helps and it is more fun and it is one of the most creative parts of this whole process is to create a physical manifestation of the game. When I first started using this approach, um, it had to do with me applying for visas. When I came to live in the UK for the first time, I needed to apply for a student visa. And then two years later, I had to apply for a um, um, work visa. And then two years after that, I had to apply for a renewal. And eventually I applied for citizenship and so on and so forth. Altogether, I had to do visa applications six different times. The first time that I did it, I was so scared. And at the same time, um, it felt like such a boring task to complete. I was scared because it meant a lot for me, um, but also it was just boring. There was so much paperwork I had to collate. There were so many ticks I had, so many checkbox I had to take. There were so many stages. So I created a physical manifestation of the game. On a notebook, I uh, created just a very simple grid of squares and I gave each square a number and then I made a list of what each square meant. So for example, square one was get all of your documents translated and square two was um, collect the um, paperwork needed from the school that I was going to come to attend. Um, and then the third one was uh, make copies of all of the things so that I had uh, evidence that I had submitted and so on. So I collected, I uh, created the board with all the squares and all the numbers. And every time that I completed one of those, I put a sticker down. I love stickers. So for me, that was the reward in itself. Every time that I want a sticker, I put it on my notebook. And by the end, when I was ready to submit the whole thing to the embassy, I had a beautiful grid of really gorgeous stickers that just watching, just looking at them made me happy. So that was the game, that was the physical manifestation of the game that I came up with. But you can come up with your own. You can have a board on the wall, you can design your own game pieces, you can decide, for example, if you're playing with others, you can come up with different tokens for each one of you. You can, you can make um, physical manifestations of the rewards. So maybe each point is going to be a little paper coin. You can come up with whatever you want to make it fun, to make it real, and to make it something that you actually look forward to doing. And before you know it, you're going to be tackling all your life admin in a way that is just more playful, more creative, and that makes it maybe a little bit less tedious, a little bit less scary, and a little bit less boring. I hope that you have found this useful. I am really curious about the, play, the games that you're going to play, and I would love to hear which one of your tasks you have managed to, com to convert into games. And if maybe this made you change your mind about something, if you have learned something or if there's something that you want to share with me, I would love to hear from you. And you can email me at lucygps at gmail.com. Thank you for listening.